Honor Flight Network is a nonprofit organization created solely to honor America's veterans for all their sacrifices. They transport our heroes to Washington, D.C. to visit and reflect at their memorials. Since Americans felt it was important to build a memorial to the service and the ultimate sacrifice of her veterans, the Honor Flight Network believes it's equally important that they actually get to visit and experience their memorials. The mission of Honor Flight is to celebrate America's veterans by inviting them to share in a day of honor at our nation's memorials. The flight takes veterans to Washington, D.C. at no cost to the veteran, so they may experience the honor, gratitude, and community of support they deserve. The Honor Flight Network is a national network of independent hubs working together to provide a trip many of our veterans may not otherwise be able to take. Participation in an Honor Flight trip gives veterans a chance to share this momentous trip with other veterans, to remember friends and comrades lost, and share their stories and experiences with each other. This documentary tells the story of one such trip, taken from May 19th to May 22nd, 2022, with the Honor Flight Bay Area Hub. It is hoped by the producer that this story will encourage others to attend, volunteer, and donate to this very worthy cause. Back in spring of 2017, I saw an honor flight group come off a Southwest Airlines flight as my girlfriend, who was a stewardess on that flight, what that was about. So it was a group of veterans from the Bay Area, and I called the organization and volunteered to go as a guardian. My first flight out was in the fall of 2017 with a Marine from Korea. I was pumped at that moment. It uh, was not my first or second trip back to D.C., but with veterans, it took on a whole new meaning. Um, my dad's been gone for many, many, many years, but I do it in honor of him. I knew he'd be very proud of me for taking care of these veterans. All persons were instructed to meet at San Francisco International Airport by 6 a.m. on Thursday, May 19, 2022. They were greeted by the veterans and guardians and members of the Bay Area Honor Flight Board of Directors. Guardians are physically capable of assisting in the lifting of veterans, pushing wheelchairs, assisting with distribution of food and drink, coordination during visits to the memorials, and other duties as assigned by the flight director. Most veterans were surprised by the appearance of USO and American Legion volunteers who applauded their attendance and served breakfast. This was the first of many surprises. While on the plane, many of the vets took the time to get to know each other and relax. Perhaps the most enjoyable part of the flight was the landing when the vets were greeted with a water cannon salute. Our next surprise was upon entering the terminal at Reagan National Airport. We were greeted with a standing ovation from USO and American Legion volunteers, as well as some active duty personnel, plus the waiting passengers and airport personnel. For the veterans, especially the Vietnam vets, it was a very moving moment. HFBA spared no expense when they secured the Hilton Crystal City as our hotel. Located in Arlington, Virginia, it is directly across the river 
from Washington, D.C. That night, we had dinner in the hotel. It was a marvelous feast of finely served food. The evening's agenda included the guardians presenting the bios of the individual veterans. Our second day began with breakfast at the hotel. Then we loaded onto the bus for the first stop of the day, the National Museum of the United States Army. As the Army's national landmark, the National Army Museum is an enduring effort to tell the Army story and honor the accomplishments, sacrifices, and commitment of American soldiers. The museum is the first comprehensive and truly national museum to capture, display, and interpret over 245 years of Army history. When we first arrived, we watched a movie about the history of the Army in the theater. Then each veteran toured the facility on their own and learned many facts about the United States participation in several campaigns. We concluded the trip with a group photo taken by our photographer, Connie Colombo. Our next stop was the World War II Memorial. The memorial celebrates a generation of Americans who emerged from the Depression to fight and win the most devastating war in world history. Dedicated on May 29, 2004, it commemorates the sacrifices made by many Americans. It honors the 16 million who served in uniform, of whom over 400,000 gave their lives. We next visited the National Museum of the United States Navy, or U.S. Navy Museum for short. We are coming to our museum, and I always say our museum, but the reality is this is your museum. This is all the Navy Museum, all the Marine Museum, all the Air Force Museum, all the Army Museum. And it's located in the former Reach Mechanism Shop of the Old Naval Gun Factory on the grounds of the Washington Navy Yard in Washington, D.C. The U.S. Navy Museum collects, preserves, displays, and interprets historic naval artifacts and artwork to inform educate and inspire naval personnel and the general public. The U.S. Navy Museum was established in 1961 and opened to the public in 1963. As one of the 15 Navy museums throughout the country, it is the only one that presents an overview of U.S. Naval history. Permanent and temporary exhibitions commemorate the Navy's wartime heroes and battles, as well as its peacetime contributions in exploration, diplomacy, space flight, navigation, and humanitarian service. Arlington National Cemetery conducts between 27 and 30 funeral services each weekday and between 6 and 8 services on Saturday. The grounds honor those who have served our nation and provide a sense of beauty and peace for their guests. Our group was especially honored to witness the changing of the guard.
testimony that you are about to witness is an Army green plan ceremony to be conducted by Honor Flight Bay Area. It is requested that everyone remain silent and standing during the ceremony. All military personnel in uniform will render the hand fluid, and it is appropriate for all others to place their right hand over their heart. Green Oh! Additionally, we were honored to be able to lay a wreath at the tomb of the unknown soldier. Back at the hotel that evening, we had a dinner that would be surprising and emotional. The five-star meal was surpassed by another surprise for the veterans, mail call. Each veteran was handed an envelope that contained mail from home. Letters written to the veteran from unknown supporters and in some cases, actual family members. The latter letters elicited from some veterans some very emotional responses. Where is Rick? Where is that Robert Smith? Here. Neil Bowden? Larry Bruce Larry Castanucci. And Frank Chicago. Because we did a lot of, we've done a lot of reunions, many reunions together, and now I have to go back because they want to enjoy a lot of the parents, new parents, we met a lot of new parents. And I appreciate it, and I appreciate all of you, and I like it. And really enjoy spending time with all of And I always uh, like to thank Dean, Michael, and all the uh, people that <coughs> I'm extremely proud to be here with every one of you. Uh, it's, uh, it's a blessing. And with all these different personalities, all these different experiences, and uh, everybody has some work, and everybody has some experience, and uh, everybody is by the ball as a human being, and uh, I think mean, that's the way we should look at each other, and other human beings, and treat everybody with dignity and respect, and uh, and you're doing that now. We'll thank the whole group here and everybody. And, uh, and uh, anyway, thank you all very much for this beautiful experience in my life. I'll never forget it. Thank you.
There you go. Do you want to go get them, Donna? Oh, yeah. Best time. It's supposed to hit 97. There we go. We are going to be down at the Navy Memorial at noon. <laughs> yeah, that's, that'll be warm. Yeah, it's going to be Yeah, warm. well, you'll be inside. No, we will not. We're outside on the plaza. <laughs> I'm going to give you a ticket if you don't slow down. Do <laughs> water guy? Oh, we all got water in the back of our Oh, good. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, this is crazy. It's um, lots of water. Thank you. Sir, how are you? Good. Yeah, I'm all late. I've been here since we were six years. Oh, well, you know that's a good time in the morning. To get that was late for me. That's late. I've been here. I'm usually at the four o'clock. I'm going to Thank you. As part of the trip, the veterans did a SEF tour in the FDR Memorial and the MLK Memorial. Next scheduled for lunch outside of the Navy Memorial in Washington, D.C. However, in another surprise, 
we were treated to the presentation of a performance by the United States Air Force Honor Guard. Integrity first, service before self, excellence in all we do. Since 1947, these core values have guided airmen to break barriers and dominate the skies as the most dominant air power the world has ever seen, the United States Air Force. To showcase the same standards of performance expected of all American airmen, we present to you the Ambassadors in Blue, your United States Air Force Honor Guard drill team. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Senior Airman Kyle Monahan of the United States Air Force Honor Guard, stationed at Joint Base Anacostia Bowling in Washington, D.C. The Honor Guard traces its beginning to the year 1948, when an elite ceremonial unit was activated within the Air Police Squadron. This specialized police unit was tasked with representing the Air Force's funerary Kyle. and ceremonial functions Thank you. throughout the National Capital Region. Since then, the Honor Guard has grown to include airmen from all Air Force specialties and continues to represent the nation in high-level ceremonies throughout the world. Each team member is armed with a fully functional 11-pound M1 Garand rifle with a fixed bayonet, described by General George S. Patton as the greatest battle implement ever devised. The Garand was the standard-issue service rifle when the Air Force was formed and is a piece of Armed Forces history. As in every Air Force mission, the drill team executes each movement with flawless timing and exacting precision. Throughout the performance, airmen will engage in dangerous weapon exchanges and complex movements that require absolute focus. However, I encourage you to applaud and cheer at any time. You will not break their concentration. Before heading home, our last two stops, the United States Marine Corps Memorial and the Air Force Memorial. I'm very honored and very privileged to have been able to attend this gathering of comrades. But Anna Nutbread was, uh, was wonderful, and, and uh, everybody was uh, was very, very nice to us, and uh, we, we appreciate that. It was, uh, uh, it was very, very, very touching. I almost tears. I never ever experienced that uh, coming home from Vietnam. And I got out of traffic, and it was on the front, let us go, and. I was so scared that I, I was up against a tree all the time and watching the traffic go by real quick. And uh, it was amazing the people clapping, looking at taking pictures. It was great and I saluted them. Uh, it, was, it was amazing. I, I just couldn't get over it. I had my camera I was going to take film video and I, I just couldn't do it because I was nervous, excited. It was, it was unusual. Here. Different. It was you know, good. Now I've been very fortunate in in my life. Okay, and I was I run the birth lottery. Um, I had parents who loved me, and I live in the United States. 
and I can thank all the veterans who are on the flight today for that. Both my parents were veterans, my dad was in the Army, my mom was a Marine, they're both deceased now. And so I just have so much fun hanging out with the veterans for the day, I do quite a few of these, and hearing all their stories. So that's the reason I do that. Tell me why you decided to get involved with Honor Flight. Um, I think the main thing was I was working at the Palo Alto VA in the emergency department. And I kept seeing these veterans come in kind of having the worst day they've probably had in a long time. But somebody told me about Honor Flight, one of my World War II vets. And so I got involved because I wanted to see the veterans at their, in their element with their people healthy, enjoying life instead of in a hospital bed. And that got me started. You guys, hey, Connie, they were going to ban me. Well, they to me. Look at smile on there. I don't know. Hey. Thank you. All right, Ellen. Thank you. Drive safely. Give me a little text so I know you got home okay? Yes. Thank you. What's going on now? Thank you. 